Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back again to another episode of The Last Christian. This is our Bible teaching uh, session that we're into today. Uh, however, uh, we just came back from the conference, so we're going to touch on a little little of the things we've done over there. And uh, JD and I went to hear The Watchmen out in Dallas, and we had a blast. And we also looked at the eclipse, as you could probably tell from the picture behind me. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that in the presentation I did there. We gave you a teaser uh, about what it was going to be. Now I'm going to get into a, a little bit more of what it was. So maybe you want to grab a, uh, a copy of the video. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, J.D., come on in. Tell everybody how, how everything went at the conference. Oh, it was awesome. The only thing, that, the only bad part about it, David, is I lost my voice. You know, um, <laughs> I mean, I interviewed so many of the speakers and, you know, the, um, some of the people that were putting together some really nice exhibits there. It was mm -hmm. a, just a great time. It was, it was wonderful Christian fellowship. Loved it. Okay. Loved every minute of it. And um, I want to give uh, special credit here to Mr. Mike Kerr uh, as well, who put everything together. And, and it was a challenge for him. I won't go into any detail on that. But he, he was uh, up against the challenge, too. And, and for him to even be there. Uh, was a blessing for all of us. Mm -hmm. But um, mm -hmm. anyway, David, I'm I'm looking forward to a teaching. Get back to get back to business <laughs> here on a, on a on a Thursday evening. So I'm going to just turn you loose with it, and, and we'll go all from right. there. So, all right. Yeah. To to get everyone else, I mean, we can we can talk for a while. It was fun, but to get everyone else, uh, just go ahead and hear the Watchmen .com. You can actually get the uh, the videos that are online. We were talking about the live stream where well, they're all recorded, so you can still get them if you want. Amen. But we wanted to touch on today um, some really cool stuff. We just had the eclipse, and the there's people on both sides of this whole story, and I think um, it's both it's it's extreme on both ends, just like Christians do. You know, you're either yay, I'm rapture and we're leaving tomorrow, <laughs> or uh, oh my God! No, no, it's post, and we're never going to get out of here. We're all mm -hmm. going to, you know, be beat up by the Antichrist. Mm -hmm. So uh, again, it's somewhere in the middle, and it's both and. And yeah, we we may get out of here today. Right, that's a definite possibility. But we may be here for another fifty years. Okay, right. that's really up to the Lord, and He does that on purpose. I'm ready for today. But I'm also ready for 50 years. What about you, J.D.? Um, I'm with you 100% on that, David, except I don't think it's going to be 50 years. I'm just, you know, I'll, I'll go out on a limb. It's going to be well, quicker just, than that. Just in case. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't think so either. I've been watching this for 50 years, and mm -hmm. uh, I think the, the birth pains are increasing tremendously. Amen. Um, but, you know, along along those lines, um, you know, you remember that guy that wrote uh, It Is Well With My Soul? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so uh, I forgot his name off the top of my head. But Me too. The, um, what happened is he he, he lost a couple of kids and almost lost his wife in the ocean because they, mm. they were on a ship coming back from America to, to England, uh, but they were they were working in Chicago because they had a mission, and then he uh, lost, and his wife just sent a note. You know, I'm the only survivor. They only can like mm. telegram back then. Wow. Um, Kids gone, only one left, something like that. And then um, he was distraught. But even he, so he was so distraught, they were such good, strong Christians that he said, it is well with my soul. Yeah. And that's where you get, you know, the sea billows were all, he's talking about the loss of his children <laughs> and, and almost his wife. Uh, and then his daughter that he had after that event actually grew up and had a, uh, you know, big ministry. I think she lived mm. to like 90. Wow. And but, but here's the deal. Um, this this was my point. He did that, and then after this event, he went and moved to Jerusalem because he believed the rapture was any day, and he wanted to be in Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. Jesus came back to capture it, and they had every reason to believe it was back then, as well. Okay? Now, wasn't it? Was it John or was it uh, Paul that thought that the rapture was going to happen in his lifetime? Yeah, yeah, Paul. Paul okay. said, hey, listen, okay. he was waiting for it right now, and he taught yeah. everybody that. He said, right. be, be ready. Yeah. And even even Corinthians is like, someone wrote us a letter and said it happened already. And it's like, no, nah, <laughs> didn't happen yet. You're still here. <laughs> right. So, um, but that is by design. The yes, difference today is that there are signs. 
Mm -hmm. The Israel has been in the land again. We mm -hmm. see exactly all the things that could not have happened before actually are happening. Like the entire world seeing him coming at once. Right. That couldn't right. happen before. How could mm -hmm. the how could one leader of the world keep everybody in the world from buying and selling? Yeah. Well, that's easy. I mean, we see that today. Everything's electronic mm -hmm. digital currency. Even right. if you think your uh, American dollar is, you know, real money, it's not. It's still digital currency because <laughs> right. you use your credit card in the bank. <laughs> Right. It's all the same thing. Um, so, and, oh, you know what's a cool note, J.D., is um, Lois has been showing me some things. Um, there's a uh, hex hexagonal structure, hex, hexatic. I forget how that's going, too. It's been a rough weekend. <laughs> yeah, but buddy. it's a base 6. We have a base 10 um, numeric system. You know, everything goes in 10s. What do you say? But there's a, a a six base as well, sectagonal, um, something like that. Now, when I come back, I'll write it in the notes when they figure it out. Okay. So <laughs> the basically it bases in in six and in sixty and in six hundred. Okay, it's a much more uh, efficient numerical system. The Babylonians used it. They use it when they did the. Um, any of the timing pieces that they had when they did geometry, everything is 60 degrees, right? Okay. And then 360 degrees was all the way around. Mm -hmm. And everything was a six base. We got 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. Everything is a six base mm -hmm. because it's better. It's divisible by two and three and, and one, whereas 10 is divisible by two and five yeah. and so it, it just makes better for more better computing and better stuff like that. Okay. Uh, but w we don't think like that. That was a Babylonian Oof. structure. So when the Lord was saying, hey, you got a, this uh, six base, I think, wow, the computers, AI, mm. you know, with a uh, adiabatic quantum computer would have that same base mm -hmm. in, in the computer code. And cryptocurrency kind of uses that because it, the security goes beyond what anybody can hack. I don't get crypto. I, I don't understand it. I'm scared well, it. it's <laughs> it's pretty much the same as your bank account at this point. Hey, mm. it's just numbers on a, in a pay. Hey, you have a thousand dollars. Oh, yeah, based on what? $1, though? $1, I mean, well, what is it based on? Bitcoin, you can spend that. What's it best based on, though? I don't get it. I don't. I mean, they just make it's it based up. Based on and supply and demand, just yeah. like your dollar in your pocket. I don't it's have, I got a dollar in my pocket. You know that. You saw it. <laughs> well, that dollar <laughs> used to buy you a bunch of things, and now it doesn't. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the idea. It's just supply okay. and demand, which yeah. is why they went to fiat currency to begin with, because yeah. they knew, oh, let's let's just keep all the gold and the silver and just tell everybody we have it and give them this paper <laughs> money, and the joke's on them. Mm -hmm. So we basically got paid, but that's fiat <laughs> currency. It's the same idea. It's yeah. just in a digital form instead of a paper form, okay. just like your banking system today. I can okay. sell you money. It's just, I'm selling <laughs> you some numbers. It's not right. real money. Right. <laughs> that's all it is. Okay. Um, that's my, that's my sidebar for today. Okay. All right. <laughs> my <rabbit hole. laughs> there you go. All right. Well, anyway, if I get my brain back, we'll talk about other things. Oh, I wish so, I'd just come back on. <laughs> yeah, that's good I literally just got back a couple hours ago. Uh, home so uh even i even got jet lag a little bit so oh, yeah I gotta but it's all good mm -hmm. praise god so we went into genesis 114 like we did last week when i gave you the wrong verse and god <laughs> said let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven mm -hmm. to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years so mm -hmm. we did be we were able to touch on the surface of this okay. and talking about the gospel being written in the stars. So in the uh, teaching on generational contracts, the whole idea of the Bible being a contract written from before the foundation of the world, mm -hmm. it is. So we saw verses where it talks about that. Hey, oh, am I not written in your book? Right. Mm -hmm. So let's pull that one up. Okay. Come on. Mister. There it is. Ah, there it is. Okay, where are we going? Actually, my computer's mad at me. He's like, where have you been? You left me for a week. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not doing anything. 
<laughs> where where, where so, are we going, David? Book book and chapter. Oh, um, oh. Let me see. Let's do Psalm 19, one, okay. one through six again. Okay. Okay. I got it. Okay. And then um, Psalm 19, one through six, the Psalm of David. The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. So that declare is um, the word safar. So literally means to, he wrote it down. Mm -hmm. And he wrote down the contract before the world began. Right. And that, that was, that, a, yeah, that's mind blowing. That were, yeah. Yeah. And so, and the word, and it says, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. That word, is, me, Nagad, is to explain. Right. So it literally, literally says that the heavens inscribe. So the heavens were written down all of his handiwork, right? The glory of mm -hmm, God. Mm -hmm. And the firmament explains it. Ah, okay. Now, uh, real quick, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and put this up here, David. This is your mm -hmm. uh, uh, your your site, okay? And the mm -hmm. reason I'm doing that is because uh, David gave me a preview of what he was going to speak at at the conference, like the night before. Mm -hmm. And I think you went for like an hour or maybe just a little bit over, and, and I got – the the shorter version you know 30 35 minutes something like that but uh the reason i'm bringing this up here is because people you can get a copy david will tell you how that, that you can get a copy of his presentation because it's awesome i mean uh it's something that i bet you nobody's ever seen before if you know uh i'll, I'll let you explain it, david you'll do a heck of a lot better mm -hmm. than me yeah it's um so i was able to put it the uh, everything into a cohesive form so you can understand where it goes. Uh, we glean from a lot. There, there's plenty of uh, good writers ahead of me. E.W. Bullinger wrote uh, Witness of the Stars. It was Joseph Seiss wrote Gospel in the Stars. There's a handful of people along the way. Now, those two guys were in the 1800s, so there's uh, some information that was been discovered since then to... Right update things mm -hmm. i wouldn't say uh had to correct them but update them because mm -hmm. there there's ancient hebrew names for stars that uh, we're finding out okay as opposed to the ones i have like hercules isn't hercules the greeks took the mighty man and made him hercules ah, you know but okay. he wasn't hercules okay gotcha so uh they kind of transposed them to try and steal them mm. uh and then um we're going to see that it was written even before the foundation of the world, like in Exodus uh, 32, 32. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, if not blot me, I pray out of thy book. So Moses is talking. He says, uh, please forgive the Israelites. Um, and if you have to, you know, take my name out of the book of life mm. that he had. But it, it was his book that thou has written. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And now, here he's talking before he actually wrote it <laughs> clearly mm. so the event took place before that because he right. couldn't have written it down other other than that so where where did he write it before that obviously now like, oh, i know yeah, moses wrote this no mm. moses is writing now about the event that happened before and the event mm -hmm. happened before it says it was already written mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. well what book has he written well what? this is the contract that was written in the stars yeah, contract is something you know. I it took me a bit to um, understand that, um, mm -hmm. but you know, once you really start breaking down, it really is a contract. It really is. I mean, I had never really thought about it in those terms until you know the two of us started talking about it. But it's definitely a contract, without a doubt. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And there, there's terms and conditions. Everything has terms and conditions in it, and that's. The only reason we have contracts is because that's the way God did it to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. And we don't understand that. And people try and separate it. And people say, oh, it, uh, like when you're dealing with creation, you know, because we, we're in Genesis. So it says, oh, creation. Oh, you believe you believe in the science or you believe in, in, in the Bible? Well, excuse me, the Bible is science. It's the <laughs> correct science. Right. <laughs> but that's what the devil does. He tries to oh, separate it. And he, and he plays that card and people fall into it. Oh well, yeah, you're playing a religion. Oh well, well, explain to me, you know, creation w without using the Bible. 
Mm. Like, what are you, an idiot? <laughs> <laughs> Explain evolution without using science terms. Right. <laughs> That's uh, it, it, dumb. That is the argument, if you would. The science was written is, in the Bible long before everything. All they're doing is proving it right. The more de- the more they dig and the more they try, the more they prove it right. That's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's like saying, oh, oh, you think you can beat me at baseball? Try doing it without a bat and a ball. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> so what was this book that he had written? That's the question. Everything was written in the stars. Mm-hmm. Um, Psalm 56, 8. Thou tell us my wanderings and put my tears in a bottle. Are they not in thy book? Okay. So check that out. Mm. Your father has a bottle just to remember your tears. And he writes a note on every single one of them. Oh, wow. Before the foundation of the world. Wow. That's how much he loves you. That's incredible. I, that, here, here's another one of those verses that I've read a bunch of times, you know, mm-hmm. and here's the bam. Okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <All right. clears throat> so think of that. Yeah. Every last tear that you cried, he saved it in a jar and wrote the note on it. Mm. And how much he loves you and wants to mm. comfort you through those tears. Wow. Wowzers. But that Man. book was written. And this leads me to believe a lot of things that are kind of odd, uh, but it just leads in this direction. Psalm mm-hmm. 139, 16 says, Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which mm-hmm. in continuance were fashioned, and as yet there were none of them. Mm-hmm. That, that's a science term. I like that part where it says being yet unformed. Being yet unformed. You know why? Because your DNA is a code. Mm -hmm. It's a computer code. Yeah, basically, yeah. That's Mm -hmm. what it is. Yeah. So people say, oh, you're going to get, what if I, you know, cut you up in little pieces and throw you in the ocean and all sorts of different sharks eat you? How's God going to rapture you then? It's DNA, it's code. It's DNA Mm -hmm. code. So. Mm you can't get rid of it. It's like a computer program. You can bust my laptop to pieces, but I'll just install the program on another computer. And there it is. Yeah. I'll yeah. take my, my word file and I'll put on another computer and there it is exactly mm-hmm. the same. as well. That's what God's mm-hmm. going to do. He's going to take your DNA code and just put it in. And now we'll, we'll have a perfect universe mm-hmm. basically. And so, okay, now let's put your DNA code on this much more improved computer, which is mm-hmm. a new time continuum that he has and because that's what it is it's a, it's a dna code and that's exactly what he says right here there's dna um coding right in here well i gotta uh, i gotta bust in on this one real quick because yeah. um you you mentioned you know you can sharks and all that stuff what uh, what jumped in my mind was people attempting to hide from god through the act of cremation at their death and yeah. I, I have heard that many times, and that's not going to work either, is it, David? No, it's because it's your DNA code. Right. So it's, it's just going to come back. Uh, now, the uh, New American says, your eyes have seen my unformed substance. Oh. And in your book all, were all written the days that were ordained for me, uh, when as yet there was none of them. Mm-hmm. So it's a code. He wrote it in yeah. a book. Okay, mm-hmm. this is... This is 3.2 billion letters that he wrote wow. in your book that says how big your toes are going to be. Mm-hmm, what mm-hmm. You're going to have, you know, and uh, if you're going to be snarky, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. And he wrote Man. that. He designed you on purpose in the book. Yeah. So not only is he put all the stars up there and on day four, it literally says, Oh, he made the stars also. Yeah. <laughs> Afterthought, basically. I mean, that's, it wasn't, but, you know, that's kind right. of how it comes across. So all these trillions of stars, all of them named by God before he wrote anything else down, okay? Mm-hmm. All told uh, Adam and Seth and all those guys that said, this is the stars, this is... 
And now when you go in order of the brightness and name them, it'll tell you what each constellation means. And then you're going to teach your kids this. And here I, I put it all in the stars so you wouldn't forget it. Mm -hmm. And that he says, oh, yeah, he made the stars also. <laughs> Just to tell how yeah. he made you. How mm -hmm. much more glorious is the creation of you, a sentient, living, loving being that can love him back than Amen. all the trillions of stars. Amen. Amen. Just a bunch it's of just, bright yeah, mind suns. Yeah. Yeah. Unreal. You know, we, we, you could look through a straw and literally see over 10,000 galaxies in space just by wow. looking through a straw. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Where did they come from? Well, and I just know, I know that when that. I was going, uh, when, when you were showing me your presentation the night before, you know, mm -hmm. you have all these stars laid out and, you know, you kind of connect everything together. And, you know, anyway, I, I wanted to mention it again because I really think people ought to get that. I really do. Because it, it's mm -hmm. an eye-opening deal. And, um, you know, it, it really got to me. And I know, I know that if you're interested in um, prophecy, if you're interested in the Bible, you're interested in God, you're interested in knowing where you came from, it's, uh, it's going to be worth your time. Yeah, it's trust powerful. Me. Yeah, so you can is. get the video and whatnot at hearthewatchmen.com, hearthewatchmen.com. Uh, you, can, you can order all the videos from all the presentations, and mine's in there. If you use the term last Christian, you'll actually get 10 bucks off. But if you email me at thehiddenday at protonmail.com, that's thehiddenday at protonmail.com, um, you know, I'll send you the actual files that we use for it so you can follow along with the video presentation if Amen. you'd like. Yeah, and that's All awesome. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and with each, um, there are constellations. So they're, they're laid out like this, uh, J.D. Basically, they all go in order, all right? Mm -hmm. And for um, just understanding purposes, there's three books, each having four chapters, okay? Okay, yeah. And then... So the you have the um, first book talks about you know him coming to Earth and then there's the redemption mm -hmm. and then there's the consummation of his power at the end and we'll talk about a little bit we'll we'll get into that deeper in the second half but okay. I'll give you a, a okay. little teaser the um so it literally lays it out it's not just like random stuff oh this yeah. means this and this means this because you get some crazy I've seen some some well-meaning Christians come up with some of the craziest nonsense out there. <laughs> and they're mm. using their own like conjecture. Like yeah. I saw one and I'm not going to, not going to tell you who they are. And I actually saw a couple different things. And one of them is like, well, yeah, that's, oh, uh, that's what the, you know, kind of means here in the stars. They say it means this, but, but uh, I think I see it like this. Here's the crab <laughs> and you know, the crab, mm. Oh, the crab lives underwater. So <laughs> this one must be uh, something about the flood. I'm like, are you, you smoking give it, dope? No, I, I want to say, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you give it about 30 years of thought and come back when you got some real. Yeah, and don't some, talk something, to me yeah. for that 30 years. <laughs> yeah, now my, my impression, uh, David, before meeting you and, and finding all this stuff out, I just assumed that God just like threw these things, you know, just like, and it just so happened that some of them lined up and looked like the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper and all that kind of stuff. It just, that was just accidental, you know. Mm -hmm. I, that was how I really envisioned everything prior to getting my um, my, my seminary degree from you. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> now, think of that. Think of that. That is what the devil wants you to think. That, right. oh, it just all exploded, and it's just there, and yeah. everybody just said, let's play Connect the Dots and, and make these things. Right. Uh, and then you got the pagan side that said, oh, no, these are aliens telling us uh, this is your horoscope. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So much um, bastardization, shall mm -hmm. I say. And misinformation. Oh, true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. That um, it, it's, you really have to dig in and unwind it all. Yeah, yeah. Because, you know, wicked, wicked means to twist. So it's wicked mm -hmm. because they twisted it. Yeah. So we got to go in and untwist it. Because remember, <laughs> Satan can't create anything new. He right. can only twist what God has made. Right. So I right. found so much truth with just that one, that, that one little thing, J.D. The one little idea is that everything has a foundation in truth. You just have to untwist it. Right. Right. That's all. 
Yeah. Oh, horoscopes of stars. Okay, well, no, I don't think it's about me. Let's untwist it. Oh, God mm. wrote it, and it's all about him. Mm. Oh, I get it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's literally with everything. But which makes what a lot we more do sense. as Christians, uh, which the devil likes this as much, too. He don't, he don't care if you think you caught him. Oh, that's astrology. I'm not going to talk about that. Ha, ha, ha. Mm. He's like, mm-hmm. great. Yeah, because <laughs> then you won't understand that God wrote this <laughs> in the stars beforehand. But that's what he wants you to believe that they were just randomly thrown out there. That's the Big Bang. Yeah, yeah. But what we need to fully understand, it says, is for signs, for seasons, for days and years, and and the Moedim is, mm-hmm. is in there. Literally placed each one, and he calls them all by name. That's the incredible part. Yeah. And you Nick, think about it. I mean, Nick, I don't, each and every one of them. How do you even number them? I mean, you know, and, and God right? said that himself, you know, but, um, you know, I, I don't even, I would be doing even a disservice to say there's billions of them because there's billions of, you know, oh, I mean, well, there's yeah. billions of galaxies full yeah, of billions right. of stars. Exactly, <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, so, man. Yeah. Each. And um, so that's where we're at. He's trying to steal it, he's trying to take it, and that. If he can give the idea that they're just random out there, that's fine. But yeah. it's extremely clear that everything all through history points to people looking at the stars for times. Mm. All right. Whether it's the time of the day. If you're out at night, you can know what time it is at night just by where the stars are because the earth mm. rotates. Mm-hmm. And you can see, oh, if this is here, it, it goes around the North Star. So you can tell. It's literally like that little clock. Mm-hmm. But then there's also the wandering stars, planetas, um, planets, and they also are another clock that goes mm-hmm. around. Mm-hmm. Then there's this clock. And it's literally, that's, that's how the Magi knew that Jesus was coming. Yeah. yeah. Because the clock came around. Oh, here's this, here's this, here's this, here's this. It's time for him to come. Yeah, because, you know, in the Bible, it makes it sound like, you know, they just kind of... Uh, Look up, or, or the way that I, inter- the way I understood it. It's not what the Bible says. Let me back that up. The way I understood it was they looked up, they saw this star over, you know, and we're going that way, and that's it. Mm. I mean, no, nothing more than that. It didn't go any deeper than that, and it goes a lot deeper than that. <laughs> so, yeah. All right. Well, David, we're almost out of time for the first half of the show, so I'm going to wind this down, and then in the second half, David's really going to give us a teaching. Okay, I kind of held him up on this. As, as usual, it's my big mouth holding us up. So anyway, uh, we'll be back after a break with the second half of the show. Well, I know you guys are going to want to hang in there with us, and so we, anyway, don't let the, the short amount of time we're gone bother you. We'll be right back. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Julia Chapman. Iran is primed to launch significant missile or drone strikes against Israeli government and military facilities, according to U.S. President Joe Biden. He gave the warning at a press conference alongside Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida at the White House, where Benji Heyer reports. President Biden insists the United States will do whatever it can to protect its ally. As I told Prime Minister Netanyahu, our commitment to Israel's security against these threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. Such a move by the Islamic Republic or its aligned militia groups in the region would likely escalate the ongoing Middle East conflict, Israel's vowing to fire back at Iranian soil if hit. Just hours before Joe Biden's statement, Iran's supreme leader Ayatollah Ali Khamenei reiterated his promise to retaliate following a deadly blast on Iran's consulate in the Syrian capital of Damascus last week. It killed senior Iranian military officials and Iran blames Israel for the attack. Benji Haya, Washington. Ukraine's parliament has passed a controversial mobilization bill. It comes as a renewed Russian offensive is expected in the coming months. Megumi Lim reports from Kyiv. The mobilization bill was passed in the final reading with a majority of 238 votes after months of deliberations. The legislation still has to be signed by Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky before it officially becomes law. The full text of the legislation has not yet been published, but the amendments would likely include specific punishments for men evading draft and the introduction of basic military service for Ukrainians within a certain age group. One of the more contentious aspects of the bill was that it set no limits for the length of service for mobilized soldiers. 
During the days leading up to the vote, President Zelensky signed into law three other measures relating to mobilization, including lowering the draft eligibility age from 27 to 25. Megumi Lim in Kiev. Leaders of South Korea's ruling People Power Party are stepping down following a massive defeat in the country's parliamentary elections. The opposition Democratic Party won 185 of 300 contested seats in what experts call a blow to the administration of President Yoon suk yeol Chris Gilbert reports. This is a significant setback uh, for the PPP, for Yoon suk yeols party. He is now set to become the first ever South Korean president to do a five-year term with no party control over the National Assembly at all. And so that effectively, as experts would say, makes him a lame duck for the rest of the uh, three years of his term. From bureaus worldwide, this is FSN. Hey, everybody. We are back for the second half. And my brain is still holding out, so that's pretty good. J.D., how's your brain doing? Oh, man, David, like I was telling you during the quick break there, um, I'm just beat. I'm exhausted mentally, (laughs) physically. I mean, you know. when you know you did a good job. (laughs) It's just the greatest thing in the world. It was such a marvelous, marvelous conference. You know, I mean, I wouldn't have missed that for the world. That was awesome. Cool. All right, so let's let's do this. I promise you we'd get into just a basic outline of the books and in order that they were written um, in the stars. Now, again, with the, along with the twisting, they always twist the seasons too. Mm. You know, the um, worldly uh, idea of the, the zodiac would be to start in the spring when it really starts in the fall with Virgo. Mm. And there's a reason for that, because they, they didn't want you to understand that it started with the seed of the woman. Oh, so they okay. started in the middle and kind of just messed up the things along the way and yeah. just made it confusing. But they couldn't just make up new constellations because they've been there. It's not like you can <laughs> do it. Right. You know, hey, let's just connect the dots in different ways and I can make a, uh, you know, a Pokemon over here or whatever. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So they didn't want to do that. But it actually starts with... Um, the seed of the woman, which would be Virgo. Mm -hmm. Now, here's a little thought that I really want to look into. I haven't looked into it yet. There are some who would surmise and purport that it was Joseph who uh, aligned the pyramids and the Sphinx and stuff over in Egypt because he was there and he was, uh, because he was a son of Abraham, he was well-versed in the stars, you know, and uh, the that line because Abraham knew what it was. They all they all knew what it was basically. Mm-hmm. But he was taught by God, and he he God said, "Hey, look at the stars." And when he when God told Abraham to look at the stars and to you know in English we have uh, the can you number the stars? And we think it means uh, to count them, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. in Hebrew it really means can you enumerate these particular stars that I have right here. And there is really good reason to believe that he was actually looking in what we call cancer today. And it's not cancer like the sickness and it's not a crab. Uh, That's just some of the corruption that came down, Mm -hmm. but it's cancer. And it essentially means a, a, a nice in or a stall that you can gather people. So this is the great gathering of his people. And okay, the, I, I gotta, guess what, what a clap, David, clap I, I, I got to jump. It. I, I got to jump in here. I'm, I'm really sorry, but surprise, you know, surprise. All, all this crab stuff, you know, and, and mm-hmm. I've seen the picture, you know, we, we looked at it together when we were in a hotel and um, couldn't that, please don't yell at me. Couldn't that possibly be Jesus with his hands out, you know, bringing people in? Does that well, make any that, sense? Yeah, some people surmise that that's the idea of the crab, that all those arms are gathering everybody mm-hmm. underneath. Yeah, But it's still a nasty, you know, crab. That's not <laughs> kosher. <laughs> okay. okay, it was just a thought. Like I said, you it's know? crazy. Okay, go ahead. How can you even eat those things? It's disgusting. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> but it, the point is, it was a gathering in like an mm-hmm. inn, not even just a pen. It was yeah. it was like a building almost for the okay. great gathering, like or a tabernacle, if you would. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's what 
it's right in when we see the layout of the books you'll see it's right there it's it's in that portion of the story where he's doing the great gathering mm -hmm. so he told abraham to look and enumerate and there's something in right smack in the middle of uh what we know as cancer today in the crab mm -hmm. And they call it the beehive because yeah. it's this cluster of stars in the middle that has so many stars they don't even know how to number them. Yeah. Just in the center of there. Yeah. So there's really good reason because of the structure of the language. He's saying, look up at this and you know how the story goes mm -hmm. and you know the gathering and now look in the gathering and enumerate all of those. Mm. And it mm -hmm. just points to there'll be a great multitude from every race, language, nation, and tongue that no man can number in Revelation Amen. chapter 7. Right. Okay. Right. It's just that prophecy spoken with Abraham way before the book of uh, Revelation where John wrote it down. Mm. But it's all the same story all the way along. So he's telling him we're going to have a great gathering and these are all going to be how many offspring you have. Mm. Not the idea that I always had, well, look at all these stars and how can we possibly number them? It was right. specifically pointed to the one constellation mm. of the <laughs> gathering that you still can't even number just that one section of it. Just that one one? Oh, good grief, yeah. yeah. It's that one little section you can't even number and you can look at it like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah. just wow. really interesting to me how um, when we start to understand this and then unwind, we see that he told Abraham, you're your offspring will be as the sand of the sea. Mm -hmm. well, well, that's Israel because they're on the earth ruling mm -hmm. with him. Mm -hmm. Your offspring. And then he turns around and says, oh, yeah, they'll be like the stars, too. Mm -hmm. So we're both seeds of Abraham, but Israel is one seed, basically. And then the other, yeah. but it's all comes back to Abraham, which is one seed, right. two different folds. Right. And that's what he says. Not seeds, but seed. Mm -hmm. um, but they're two different people groups. Yeah. And that would be the church and Israel. Right. And we see that portrayed all throughout the Mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Okay, not mozzarella, <laughs> mozzarella. Okay. So, um, and let's let's just jump into this. We we really don't have time to dig into the deep part of it, but basically, okay. book the first book. Okay, the first book is called the Sufferings of Christ. So, okay. for the first four chapters, we're going to see how Christ is suffering. Uh, so, first, he has to come. Chapter one is the prophecy of the promised seed of the woman. All right. That's, and I'm taking this from, from uh, Bullinger's book, but this is kind of a layout and a structure that we use for everything. The seed of the woman. So you see Virgo and the brightest star is the speaker, which is a seed. Okay. That means seed. And then there's the next one, just Shema, where uh, Shemach, Shemach. So my Hebrew, I got to get better on it. But basically, <laughs> it means branch. Okay. And it just, he's the branch of jesse okay uh, out of out of jesse and out of david they'll they'll spring a branch so right. you see that in the virgo so the mm -hmm. seed and the branch will come out of the virgin okay 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 and that that has different things attached to it so we see coma the desired woman and uh desired child uh and the woman holding him so there's the mm -hmm. virgin birth you see centaur mm -hmm. which is a man with two natures a sacrificial animal and a human Mm -hmm. So we see the two natures of God. He's God, and and he comes down as mm -hmm. and the man as a sacrifice. And then there's Boates, as and he's um, he cometh. Boates means he's to come. So here comes the king. Mm -hmm. Behold, he will come, and he'll be born of a virgin. So where oh. have you heard that before? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So chapter two, which would be Libra, that's the scale. So here, behold, this this child is coming, and he's coming from a virgin, and then he's going to pay the price. So Libra's a scale, and right. the price is a deficient balance versus the price with covers on both sides of the scale. So mm -hmm. it's, a cover, it's a redeeming price, and it covers your sins at the same time. Right. And then we see, along with Libra, we see Crux, which is the cross. Okay. So that's what he endured. And we see Lupus, which is the victim slain. Mm -hmm. And we see Corona, which is a crown. So okay. we see his story in there. Yeah. Okay. So we elaborate that uh, in the um, presentation as well. And then chapter three is Scorpio, and that's the conflict that he has. So remember, this is the sufferings of Christ. He comes, um, and then we we see that he his atoning work is paying for us on the cross. Mm -hmm. 
in the conflict is this Scorpio. Uh, so we see scorpions stinging him in, in the ankle or in the heel. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. and, but also he could step on him with his heel. So that's right. pretty interesting. Yeah. And we see serpent and then Ophiuchus is the man grasping the serpent. So Ophiuchus, the mighty man is wrestling the serpent. Mm hmm. Good old story, right? And then yeah. there's the Hercules is the mighty man, and he's kneeling on one knee because you know his heel hurts, so he's down on one knee, but he's yeah. got his other foot on the head of the dragon. Ah, <laughs> so, okay, <laughs> in there, so he's a mighty vanquisher. But they call him Hercules. It's, like, mm. it's not Hercules. This mighty is the mm -hmm. of, okay. yeah, it's the Redeemer's conflict. So this is Jesus fighting. He's fighting the serpent, and he wounded his heel, but he stepped on the scorpion. So mm -hmm. it has this whole picture in there. And then the fourth chapter in book one is the Redeemer's triumph. So here's mm -hmm. all his, his um, you know, the sufferings, but now he triumphs in the right. last chapter of book mm -hmm. one. Sagittarius is the archer. Again, a dual natured man with the archer. And he's, he's, he's got the um, basically coming to conquer. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and then we see the Lyra, which is a harp. Okay. All right. So now, Okay, he's conquered. He came as conquering, and now we're singing praises to him because we got the harp. Okay. And then we have the Ara, the altar, is a um, consuming fire prepared for the enemies. Mm -hmm. So now we see the triumph in there, and he comes for his enemies. And then we see Draco, the dragon, and he's cast down from heaven. Mm -hmm. So we elaborate on that, book four. But all of that is, okay, these are his sufferings. So mm -hmm. we move a sec you with me so far i, want to I am yeah i'm I, you know I, and I, everything that, that we went over in the hotel is coming back to me too as, as you're talking it's really good okay good and this is so uh, and it's laid out in the presentation again if you want to get it uh just the hidden day at protonmail.com just say a uh, conference presentation uh because you know god wrote it i didn't write it so i'm not all about yeah, right. hey, I got my copyright because I got that. <laughs> no, I didn't invent it. I'm just telling you what God said. Right. Uh, my, my gift is explaining. That's it. Amen. So mm -hmm. the second book in the stars. So we saw the first four constellations up to Sagittarius from Virgo to Sagittarius. Now we're going to see the next book, which is the next four constellations. Um, and this one is called The Blessings Procured. So the second book the redeemed and it's the result of the redeemer's sufferings so chapter one in there so he, this is the redeemed this is talking about the redeemed first it was christ coming mm -hmm. now we're going to see all about who are these redeemed people right right all right so chapter one is a capricornius is the fish goat right or goat okay. fish whatever okay. It is. okay goat fish, what fish goat okay right now a fish always represents new life Okay. Hey, they, they're going, they're going to be fishers of men okay. and, and things like that. And then he fed them with the fish. So there's new mm -hmm. life in there. And the mm -hmm. goat is the sacrifice, the sacrificial goat. Mm -hmm. So that's why you see this goat fish okay. in Capricorn. Okay. All right. It goes from the sacrifice to new life. Ah, gotcha. Okay. All right. So these are the redeemed people. We've been, you know, now we're sacrificed. Now we're going to have new life. Because of his sacrifice, we're going to have new life. Mm -hmm. So there's this arrow, Sagita. So Capricorn, and then we see the arrow of God sent forth in Sagita, and that pierced the eagle, uh, the smitten one. So the eagle is falling, and we all know what happens with the eagle. They shall rise again, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then we see another picture of rising for with life, and that's uh, the dolphin, Delphinus. Mm -hmm. So he jumps out of the water, and it, yeah. they're notorious for bring, springing up to life, and we and they yeah. jump out. Yeah. So now we see... The, uh, the piercing arrow of God, the eagle's falling down, so he's dead, but then he springs back to life. And same idea with the goat fish. Mm, okay, okay, so here the goat is sacrificed, he's dead, and then he springs back to life. Mm. So we're redeemed now because of that. Right. I've been redeemed. And <laughs> just like he lives, we shall live. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Because he mm -hmm. lives. Yeah. That one. All right, so chapter two, book two, chapter two, is their blessings are insured. So these talk about the blessings. Okay. All right, so that's Aquarius, mm. the water bearer. He's pouring out water. Okay. 
Look, yeah. see, that's yeah. blessings. He's pouring mm -hmm. out blessings upon us. How do I know? Because Pisces Australis is the fish that he's pouring it on. We're mm. new life in the fish, and he's pouring water on us. That's a blessing, right? Yeah. Okay. okay. So now he's pouring new life on it, and he's the water of life. And he even said to the, you know, hey, you drink of my water, you never thirst again. Right. Good. Right. I'll take mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And the Pegasus is the winged horse, and the horse is always a supply, and the winged horse means your supply is coming very quickly. Mm, okay. okay. Okay, so we okay. see that in Pegasus. And then the swan uh, is Cygnus, and then the um, the swan basically returns. So okay. it's a big, beautiful thing. Uh, the swan has, when it looks out, it's like you can see the cross in it, but it, the blessings are returning. Because mm. that's the idea of the swan. So the blessings are insured in the constellation group of Aquarius. Gotcha. It's put okay. out. It's part of fish. It's coming quickly. And it will keep on coming like a swan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I don't know about you. I live by a couple of lakes. And the swans keep coming back. <laughs> yeah. I got them all around <laughs> me. Hey, come back. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, what are you doing here? You know, <laughs> they say, and it's the same ones. They're like, they're mm -hmm. a couple. They, they're married. You know? Yeah. And then they, they get really sad when the, one of them dies and they're like, mm. oh, I'm all by myself. And it, but they keep coming back to the same spot every year. Yeah. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. That then it's kind of the picture. The blessings are surely returning. Uh, chapter three, book two, chapter three is their blessings in abeyance. That means they're on hold. Abeyance oh, okay. is basically they're on hold for a little while. Okay. So we were insured these blessings. We were given these blessings. But as you and I know, these bodies really aren't new yet right yeah are they <laughs> i sure hope not <laughs> i My hope this ain't the new one <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> if so I, I got picked up the wrong package that's for sure <laughs> yeah can i return this <laughs> i think someone gave me the wrong package yeah <laughs> so the blessings in abeyance the blessings are on hold so they're procured and insured but they're on hold for right now for a very specific reason, and that's Pisces, the fishes. Okay. okay. And we see Pisces, they're kind of tied together. All mm -hmm. right. But we see the idea of two fish groups. Okay. One is looking at the North Star, and mm -hmm. the other one's looking at the ecliptic. A uh, wild yeah. Just like yeah. Abraham told was told to look at the stars for mm -hmm. one group of people right. and then look at the sand or the earth level for the other ones. So and that, it's the same picture again. Mm -hmm. But they're bound to see this, the sea monster. So right now, the blessings are assured because they're fish, but they're kind of stuck. So okay. we're holding Satan down mm -hmm. because of the cores, and but Satan's holding us down. They're in a band. Yeah. They're on yeah. hold right now. That's gotcha. the picture. Okay, That's the band or the cord that connects them. And then there's Andromeda just above that. Andromeda is basically a woman who's in chains. Mm, so it's okay. the woman, you know, symbolizing the bride of Christ, but right now she's in chains. Mm -hmm. And that's a picture of basically us at this point saying, hey, the bride is here, but right now we're kind of stuck in these bodies. And that's yeah. what Paul says. You know, right now we see him dimly through a gra glass, but mm -hmm. when we see him face to face, we'll understand all these things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're in abeyance. And he understood, right. I got a thorn in my flesh for now, where mm -hmm. it's just on hold yeah. and there's cephas the redeemer and that's the king and you can see him coming to rule mm -hmm. yeah. okay so they're in abeyance but the king is coming right now and he's going to grab his bride and that's in chapter four their blessings consummated and enjoyed and we see that in the constellation of aries so gotcha. you see we're following this story all the way through mm -hmm. it's not just random constellations it's a story in order in line with chapters and and uh, sections, it's pretty wild. Well, this makes so perfect Aries, sense, really. You know, because they didn't have any uh, when when um, uh, Noah was or uh, no Noah. <laughs> yeah, Adam and <laughs> yeah, Steph Adam and, and Eve and everybody that followed them. I mean, they didn't have any paper yet. They didn't have pens yet. They didn't have anything like that. So it makes perfect sense that God had to put it up in the stars, and then them being able to see it without yeah. all the lights of today. Uh, the interpretation part's easy from there. Yep, nematics. So yeah. it's just pic yeah. picture languages. And even yeah. the letters were picture languages. I mean, mm -hmm. we just can't start. Each constellation has a letter attached to it. Yeah. That'll mess with your brain because we'll talk about that soon. <laughs> yes, <too>. it will. <laughs> now, now it's got each letter attached to it. And, and 
it, oh, now each tribe of Israel? <laughs> it, it, uh, uh, I'm telling you, this is just uh, scratching the surface. If you're not so, sitting down, do you better do it, better do it now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So here we are. Now the blessings are coming. <clears throat> and we see Aries, the ram or, or lamb, that, that depending on which version you use. But basically, the sacrificial animal that was mm. slain and is prepared for the victory. And we see this ram actually facing right towards the band, the cords. Mm -hmm. So now he's going to break that cord and we're going to be released from Satan's, you know, obeyance right. cord here. Right. All right. <clears throat> and then that's where we see Cetus, the sea monster or Leviathan. Okay. Mm -hmm. They call him Cetus, but it's really the Leviathan. And that's the one we're holding and, and he's holding us down. So mm. the ram comes in and busts those both apart. Gotcha. And then there's uh, Perseus, and that it means the breaker. And he is coming to break the head of everybody and oh. deliver us. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, so he's he's delivering us from this Leviathan, and he's the ram. He's a picture of the ram coming in, and he's going to destroy the enemy, and now we're going to be free. Mm -hmm. Okay? <clears throat> so that's pretty cool. And then we see from there... We see Cassiopeia, 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 Cassiopeia. Cassiopeia. Okay. Um, something like that in the Latin. But <laughs> she is the bride. Ah, okay. So, CBS. yeah. So Aries is busting us free. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, he's busting the fish free from the Leviathan. Okay. Mm -hmm. Perseus is the breaker, delivering us. And then we see Cassiopeia, the enthroned woman. Okay. She's enthroned, and she's literally sitting right next to Cephas the king. So ah. we see the king and the queen together okay. at this point after he breaks them through. So these are our blessings now. Now, keep in mind, when we sit with the king, that would be indicative of us being raptured, would it not? You would think, yeah. Okay. So here we are. The king and the queen are together mm -hmm. after he delivered them before the third book. Oh, uh -huh. there's a key. All right, right so here we are, mm -hmm. the picture of the king and the queen together, and then we see the third book, the first chapter. The third book is about the Redeemer. So he's okay. going to come back, and he's going to redeem everything. But he's got his bride already. Now, there's yeah. another people group. He's got to redeem the earth. Yeah. So he says, okay, I want my bride. Mm -hmm. We'll take that, but I still have to redeem the earth. Now, who's ruling on the earth? Israel. That, yeah, be, yeah, I was going to say that's Jews. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So the Jews. So there. So now we're going to talk about his return. We're basically now we're in the book of Revelation, if you would. Okay. <clears throat> and this is where he's going to come and, and redeem the earth uh, and come and rule on the earth. And uh, and then we're going to see how he protects Israel in there, too. Oh, and we're <laughs> almost out of time. We've got to run through this. Chapter one, the Messiah is coming to judge all of the earth. We see Taurus, the bull. Mm -hmm. Okay. The Messiah is coming to rule. Orion is a light breaking forth. Uh, the light is breaking forth, and he is the mm -hmm. redeemer. Okay, okay. Um, Arid <clears throat> Aridinus is a river of judgment that comes out. It's like a river of fire that comes out <sighs> of the foot of Orion. Okay, so here he is. He's the redeemer, and now his judgment has come. Mm -hmm. Think of it as the lake of fire, but it's a torrent. It's a flowing river at this point. Okay, and then even with that, there's Ariga, which is the shepherd. So even through all of that judgment, he is protecting a group of people. Mm -hmm. All right, the shepherd, he's holding them, and it happens to be goats that he's holding. So that would be Israel. Yeah. Okay. 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 And chapter two is the Messiah's reign as the Prince of Peace. People think Gemini, because that's uh, the next uh, constellation, is mm -hmm. twins. It's not twins. It's a dual-natured, a dual reign mm, mm -hmm. a unity of king and priest basically okay okay all right and he is the king and the priest coming to rule and reign and then we have lepus the hare or some some things have him as the serpent but the idea is this uh, lepus is the enemy and he's okay. trodden down okay? okay and then we see again two different people groups here we see canis major mm -hmm. which is the big dog and then canis okay. minor the second dog okay <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. So we see that. Now I'll get into that later, but we're running out of time here. Mm -hmm. So let me finish up. Chapter three is the Messiah's redeemed possessions. And here mm -hmm. where we have cancer, 
uh, as the crab that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. So now he's gathered all his people together mm -hmm. so we can all rule and reign on the earth. We're with him as the bride, and he's gathering the people together. Now they're going to rule on the earth. That's cancer. Gotcha. gotcha. Okay? okay, the crab, but, but it's basically a, a gathering place. Mm -hmm. And then we have Ursa Minor and Ursa Major, which they have today as the two bears. And then they say, oh, the little dipper. But in the ancient Hebrew, they were actually <laughs> sheep folds. Ah, okay. 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 If you look at them, they're like, they're, they look like folds. One is pointing up towards the heaven and mm -hmm. one is pointing down towards the earth. Again, yeah. we have the same vision of a mm -hmm. sheep fold looking up and a sheep fold looking down. Gotcha. Okay. And they're yeah. both circling around the North Pole, which okay. is interesting. All right. And then we have Argo, the ship. Okay. Now, Argo is, okay, we're, people are saved and protected through this destruction because they're yeah. in the ship being protected gotcha. same idea as noah's ark mm -hmm. so you're starting to see this whole book of revelation play out in the stars and then oh good we have enough time we'll hit chapter four and then we can end out the show okay. so chapter four is the messiah's consummated triumph leo the lion mm -hmm. so here we go just like the sphinx the head of the woman all the way around to the body of a lion it just tells you where to start looking and then the pyramids are lined up in orion's belt so that's really mm -hmm. interesting Mm -hmm. was it the enemies trying to mimic god and steal it or was it joseph laying it out for posterity uh, i really yeah. gotta look into that i don't yeah. even know which direction that goes yet yeah. but very interesting uh so chapter four it starts with leo the lion and we all know who leo the lion is the lion of the tribe of judah mm -hmm. we see hydrant the serpa he a uh, serpent hydra the serpent is destroyed and that's cool mm -hmm. uh yeah. because he run it goes like a third of the space is this right. this height all right the, the third of the sky is covered with it so when john takes hey i saw a third of the stars come down with him that's what he's talking about yeah yeah not okay. the actual one third of the stars landing on earth that would be impossible yeah. um but he saw a third of the sky yeah fall down yeah. with him and that's yeah. hydrated serpent is a third of the sky. We see crater is a cup of divine wrath that's poured out. And Corvus the crow is a picture of the birds eating up all the flesh, like at the end of Revelation. Mm -hmm. Now we have the king of kings, the lion, uh, ruling and reigning for the next thousand years into the millennium. Wow. Uh, and that's that's just touching the ideas yeah. here. I was fixing to it's say, that's just, that's, I mean, that's like bare minimum. You know, yeah. <laughs> um, I got the thir the shortened version as I told y'all before, um, but uh, you can you can get the real deal. And David, tell them one more time where they can get that. Well, I recommend you get all the videos, and mine's yeah. included in there. And you can go to hearthewatchmen dot com and just you click around on there, and you'll see. Uh, I might still say live. They might have taken it down so they get the videos. But you can order the videos, or if you can't find it, just email me at the hidden day at protonmail dot com. The hidden day at protonmail dot com, and we'll get you a copy of the videos if you want to get them. But I'll also send you the actual presentation where we use for all the slides that go and show all this information that we had in a little more detail than this. Yeah. A lot and more it's detail. really cool too, by the way. That presentation, uh, I'm sure a lot of people out Picture there are, are familiar with PowerPoint. Well, PowerPoint's like the elementary school version of the college degree version that David's got. I mean, I'm just it's it's a, it's awesome. It's a great presentation, and we do invite you guys to get it. Just like we invite you to join us this coming up Saturday, or not Saturday, at the end of the week show. Uh, actually, this week's going to be a little bit different because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on a couple of interviews that I did from the uh, Prophecy Conference itself. Those will air on Saturday, just like the Tuesday show was um, uh, two different uh, people. No. I'm, I'm all messed up. Anyway, yeah, uh, we got uh, <laughs> interviews from, people from the conference. Yeah, interviews on Tuesday, interviews on Saturday, and then we'll be back to normal uh, next week. Anyway, until then, everybody, good night and God bless. Thanks again for joining us today for The Last Christian Radio Show. And be sure to tune in every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday right here and at www.lastchristian.net until the trumpet sounds.
Some people won't give you the real talk on drugs, but it's time we know the facts. Fentanyl is killing people. It's a powerful opioid, often made illegally and commonly mixed with illicit drugs. It can even be pressed into counterfeit pills that resemble prescription medications. Just two milligrams, about the size of a few grains of sand, can potentially be lethal. This isn't an ad to scare you, but it is an ad to make you think twice. Get the facts. Go to realdealonfentanyl.com. This message is brought to you by the Ad Council.